Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, I'm going to share with you like a simple workflow where you can use um, grease pencil and stretch up add-on to kind of convert grease pencil into bones that you can use to create this kind of animation. So it's, re it's really rather quite simple, but uh, I think it's gonna be, can be really useful. This is actually just a flat, of course, just a flat picture. And what happened is, um, I draw like a grease pencil just you know like on top of this image and then for eyes and mouth and then turning the grease pencil into um, blender armature or bones and animate the bones but what happened also underneath is that I create this uh, some kind of tessellation based on the grease pencil strokes so instead of having um, subdivision like this um, I'll do it a couple of times instead of having this kind of mesh grid, we actually kind of uh, tessellate um, the texture um, of this mesh based on the contour of the, the mask. And then that's actually based on the grease pencil itself. So if I turn on the grease pencil, let me quickly do that. Uh, I think I hide it somewhere here. Okay, that's the grease pencil. I'll give it a different color. So it's a, you see it's very, very rough, but it's kind of it's doing the job. Even though the bone is actually not directly connected to grease pencil yet, this one, the armature is actually very easy, very easy to animate. So anyone can easily do this uh, uh, on their computer. If you want to modify an image, you know, like in, if you're, normally you would probably do it using Photoshop and maybe they have like some kind of join or bones that uh, to modify or deform an image. Uh, anyway, the mask I use is the from the movie uh, Fee for Vendetta. Um, just in case you don't know, um, V for Vendetta, B for Blend. I'll actually start from scratch. So I'm gonna delete. Uh, I'm gonna start from scratch, and this time I will actually turn on screencast key because I want to do everything and. Hopefully you guys can follow. Like for example, I want to select all the objects. It's hotkey is A, and then X is to delete it. So you can see the hotkey here. Normally I didn't turn it on because it tends to crash my uh, Blender while recording. Um, I'll, for now, I'll just let's just do it um, and see how it goes. So image explains. I'm gonna load the image of that mask. Turn it. Turn on shaders desktop let me find the mask it's a V okay so this is the mask I'll reset it alt G turn on the material look at it from the top maybe look at it from orthographic as well just scale the image a little bit so we have some kind of a good size usually matching the grid so just 10 in scale and then I'll apply it Save this real quick. This is SV uh, B for blend. That's the title of this live noting. Okay, now very quickly, I will just draw uh, grease pencil strokes uh, on top of this image. I'm gonna hold D and start drawing. So let's see, maybe for the eyebrow, like that. I'm gonna give a different color for the stroke. And let's make the eyes. So I'll make the upper lid and the lower eyelid separate. Um, maybe around this uh, cheek, kind of like simulating the cheekbone, maybe the mouth. I'm not sure with the mouth, maybe just draw like a smile there. And then something for uh, this part, the jaw, uh, what else? Maybe. I'll draw also surrounding the mask so it doesn't deform. So imagine this is like drawing bones and I will also draw kind of like a boundary for the image. In this case, it's just like a simple square. Uh, yeah, let's just do it like this. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Now we are, I think our setup is ready. Maybe one for the nose as well. I'm not sure, maybe. Sometimes you actually want to draw around the eyes. Don't need to close um, the grease strokes. 
Now let's create stretch of node tree very quickly and use a object ID selector. Let's grab the grease pencil. We're gonna use the this data just the pick frame, get that frame, and let's check it out using viewer draw. You see a uh, blender just crashes, so I'll have to restart and I'll turn on the the screencast again and um, hopefully it doesn't crash this time. Um, I think it's my computer. It's a uh, it's pretty old. Uh, hopefully you can buy a new computer soon, ish. Uh, okay, I'll. It's okay. I'll save like every few minutes anyway. Okay, we have this ready, and I'm gonna use the viewer draw. Yeah, I'll probably turn on the screencast again. So look at the grease pencil now. The points is actually like too many. So it's always I always do this many many times vector interpolations to do the resampling. So this is all the sixteen grease pencil strokes coming into this node, and we're gonna resample it. We're gonna use a range float node and specify the number of uh, resampling per curve. But there is a better way instead of um, many instead of one number to resemble all the grease pencil strokes um, I'm gonna use something um, called uh, like a length something to measure the length of uh, each stroke so it's this is actually a script node and you just simply use the path length and then you plug in the points in there and plug in the length into the count and simply multiply this length maybe by five so you can you can actually control this number so now you can see that the the, the points are equal in equal distance for each strokes and this is perfect for what we are doing and we are almost done actually uh, look at this I'm just gonna use UV connection here turn on edges so using it this way you're gonna get edges you can see but you also want to mess join it mess join this guy so we have the bones probably so you will see this become if I bake it um, and I'm gonna move the image that way so this one already bake okay it's become an edge. Um, I'll turn off the grease pencil real quick. So we have this line. And having this line, we actually can easily turn it into bones in Blender. Gonna simply turn on skin modifier, tap edit mode, mark the root for every um, separate strokes. And now you're, you're gonna have a ability to create armature and that's your armature okay you can actually delete i'll put it somewhere else you know like different layer but at least we have this armature and this armature we can work on this is for animators to animate this mask currently i can see that maybe there are too many joints so i'm gonna do it again go back to this guy back to stretch off and this one too many let's reduce that uh, that's okay. Three, two, two point five. This is better. Okay, that's a good number. And then I'll bake it again, hide it, and this guy, um, I'll skin modifier. Go to edit mode, mark the root again, and then select this guy. Create armature. Delete that guy. Anyway, this is becoming our armature joints. So this is. Now the next thing we want to do is to actually turn the grease pencil into mesh. We need a proper topology, you know, like a, it's not like a grid mask uh, for the mesh. We need a proper one. For that, we need uh, to use the Launai 2D. Use something like uh, another viewer draw. Plug this into that guy. You're gonna 
see real soon that we have these tessellations um, based on the Delaunay tri tri triangulation. So the Delaunay triangulations is based on a, you can easily create something like this based on the points. Ideally, you want to have more points, maybe a little bit more, to just to hold um, the shapes of the mask, for example. But in this case, this is kind of okay. I'll bake it. And we have this mesh. Currently, it's just blank. I hit tab, go to edit mode, and I'll do the UV real quick. Uh, smart UV project from the boundary, I believe. Actually, let me do that again. Um, UV from bound. I think it's smart UV project based on the bound, but I'll just hit OK and hopefully this works. Now we just assign a material to this guy. Okay, it seems to be working, but just upside down. Go to edit mode and tap U and then project from view bounds. I think that's better. That's better. Uh, now we're going to work on this mesh. Okay, and this mesh I can turn on the wire. something like that okay it's better um, actually and now I'm gonna select um, the mesh and select the bone control P and parent it with automatic weight now the mesh of course now can be driven by the bones we are actually kind of done with the sphere chalk so it's, a, it's not like 100% uh, not based uh, this is like a semi procedural and sometimes this is actually what you want um, not everything needs to be notes not everything needs to be scripted you know you always give back control to the artist um, so this is how you do it this guy is now can be deformed if you go to edit mode actually um, post mode um, there is edit if you use blender for the first time blender armature or bo bones has two modes post mode and edit mode edit mode is where you place the bones post mode is where you animate now you can actually start animating um, you might notice that the bone is actually kind of locked okay this is another thing you need to go to edit mode tap spacebar clear parent clear parent for armature and once you do that you go back to post mode uh, the bone should be uh, separated no, did I do it wrong? I'll do it again. Edit mode, uh, edit mode, and then clear parent. Clear parent. Okay, now now should be should be good. Back to post mode. Now every single bone is free, and let's let me try animating the eyelid for example. I'll select one bone and then C and then kind of doing that drawing. See, everything is deformable. Uh, look at the eyebrow. You can do it like if you hold, uh, select one bone, you can also kind of hover over another bone and hold L, it will select it. So you can play animate the uh, eyebrow there. I'll select everything, hit I, and keyframe lock rod scale. Okay, that's the first keyframe for this guy. And I'll do it again there so it doesn't just animate kind of try to make the eyebrow kind of moving up just like uh, I showed earlier so I'll make the the right eyes to go up um, so just animate it uh, I mean just move it with G you know G grab and move release it animate um, hit keyframe and you have that um, if the eyebrow moves up, this eye should also move up a little bit. So you can animate it. It's become like a really like fully deformable kind of uh, armature. Of course, I didn't do all kind of a uh, proper rigging with controller. This is really just directly working on it. But that's the thing with Blender bones. The bone is actually can be just a controller. Um, unless if you want to rig it properly, you want to add proper controller, things like that. But for this purpose, you know, should be okay. Uh, we, 
actually the jaw the jaw is something you know very important I'll just use C and then kind of paint on these bones to select it and this is the jaw of a character is always very very important you can kind of make a lot of um, emotion just by rotating the jaw and yeah okay that seems decent okay the this part animating is not something that uh, you can do very very quickly it takes some time um, oops if I'm not wrong I can also kind of select the bones and using a proportional um, I might be wrong where's the proportional don't worry about that the nose also rotate a little bit this eye maybe move down a little bit yeah and select all just keyframe everything and now you have that animations um, ideally I think ideally we can also kind of uh, instead of baking the grease pencil after we resemble it and then using skin modifier for the bones ideally we can control all of those but this is I think pretty good workflow um, so yeah you can create this kind of animation very very quickly for any kind of photos um, believe it or not this method also works for 3d character let's say you have like Suzanne and you if you, if you have Suzanne the monkey head and then you want to animate this character and if you just draw grease pencil surrounding parts of Suzanne like the eyes and the nose and the mouth it will work as a controller uh, for animations uh, maybe I'll do that in the next live noting maybe or in the future live noting but anyway for now this is good if you want to animate um, like a flat uh, 2d objects and you want to simply make simple animations ideally you also want to kind of separate the mask from the background in this case just like white you know so it's not a problem but if you want to bend for example you have a tree a photograph of tree and you want to bend the tree uh, you can use this method very very quickly um, and just make it especially if it's like a just a static image this is like uh, like a piece of cake okay so hopefully you like this one um, let me know what you think any inputs any feedback you want to let me know or any question let me know in the comment section below thanks again for tuning in and i guess i'll see you in the next video thank you